Christina, Christina Vidal, you know, you guys have been in the game for such a long time and you've been around before this conversation of diversity inclusion was really happening. And so growing up, what made you decide to do this? Because to be an actress, Boricua, growing up in New York City back then is rough. And yeah, yeah. To, to, to keep that dream alive, I want to make it. I want to go to Hollywood. I want to do whatever. I mean, I know my journey personally, but what was it like for you, like, you know? Well. To stay resilient I, and to stick with it. Yeah. Um, so I started professionally at 14 and my sister Christina at 10. That's when we got our first professional paying jobs. But, um, you know, for me, I was always that kid in the family that um, was singing all the time, constantly uh -huh. listening to music, making everybody laugh. I used to imitate the, you know, Carol Burnett, Flip Wilson, you know, I'm giving my age away, but I love Lucy. Like I just, I was drawn to it. And then I remember when I was very young, yeah. my aunt took me to go see the movie Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand. And that movie just swept me away. And I just remember this feeling, feel, feeling like I want to do that. And I was so young, but I knew it. I felt it in my heart. I want to sing. I want to act. I want to this, that. And so I was always, you know, when, I, when my mother sent me to camp, I was like, if uh -huh. there was a talent contest, I was there. Yeah. If there was a play at school, I was auditioning for it. It was like, it was just was everything that I loved. I loved making people laugh. I felt like that brought joy. Um, yeah. And I just felt telling, I, I loved telling stories. So that kind of became my thing. And when I got into, um, into high school uh, and it was time for uh, college, I remember that I had no idea that a school like the uh, Performing Arts existed. And they came to oh, my so school. Oh, you went to LaGuardia. Oh, was it? I well, went now to the, LaGuardia. To... Yeah, I went to the original high school Performing Arts on 46th and 6th, and 6th Avenue. Yeah, And okay. so I auditioned, and I auditioned with a monologue from The Glass Menagerie, and I auditioned with another skit uh, from The Carol Burnett Show. And I played okay. two different characters. Teddy C. Williams said two different things. Right, yeah. right. And so um, I got in, and I became a drama major there, a you know, drama student, and I studied theater. I studied uh, dance wow. and speech, you know, uh, theater speech and everything, plus my academics. And then, you know, I was very – I was already doing theater, too. My aunt, who, you know, the love of my life besides my mom and dad and my kids, but – um, and my family, but my aunt was incredibly instrumental in, uh, my, in making my dreams come true. Like she, she got me involved with a theater company, um, mm -hmm. back in the day on, uh, in Tar Theater and, and this other La Familia. Um, okay. and it, and so I started doing theater with them. And then, uh, at 14 years old, she took me to my first audition, which was mm -hmm. for a PBS show about a, a Latin Puerto Rican family in Spanish Harlem called Oye Willie. And I auditioned, oh, okay. that was my first big audition that. and I booked the role as the sister. And then it went on from there. It just was like, I hustled. I had to hustle hard though, you know? And, yeah. uh, then they I came mean, a well, time... I'll quickly say there came a time because I was playing maids. I was playing drug dealer girlfriends. Um, I was, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, murder, the wife of a murderer. Like it was all these kind of roles. And finally, I, 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 I hustled. I got a good agent. And I told my agent, I said, look, I'm tired of playing this shit. Excuse my language. Sorry. I was sorry. like, I'm tired of playing these negative st stereotypes. I was like, I want to play the lawyer. I want to play the doctor. I want to play the cop. I want to play. And she was like, you know what, Lisa, there's not a whole lot of that. Um, I said, well, you got to You got to work harder for me. And that's what I want to do. If I can't do that, I don't want to act because I'm not going to perpetuate these stories and these characters, wow. these negative stereotypes. And so that's what it came down to. I had to take a risk and I had to say so no. 
And she was like, well, let's see. I was like, let's see. So then so that's when it st start, started happening. So when you see, when you see your sister, I'm sorry, because you're coming off. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off because you're coming in a delay for me. But when your sister said that she wanted to do it, what was that? Did you discourage her? Did you say, you know, oh, no, girl, I'm going through this? Or like... Oh, no, 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 no. She was, uh, first of all, I'm 16 years older than her. So she was like my baby. Okay. Um, and she used to come to sets with me. She used to come and hang out with me and everything. Hold on, let me get my dog. All right, hold on. Well, my husband's tanning himself in the backyard. <laughs> and I'm trying to do an interview with the dog. Okay, hold on. <laughs> really, I need help. <laughs> this is all family here, don't worry about it. I know, that's why like, he's in the backyard tanning himself, and I'm like, Sarate, I need some help here. Get tell, tell, him said, hi. tell him I said hi, tell him I said hi. I will, I will, I will. Anyway, este, okay, so Christina, one, so one time she came home, I was pregnant with my first son, and my mother called me, and she had come home with an audition that she got at school. They were doing a mass search for this little girl to star opposite Michael J. Fox in a film called Life with Mikey. And so my mother called me. I had already, you know, I was already married and pregnant with my first son. My mother called me and she was like, Nena, tu hermana trajo un papel ahí, yo no sé. Y ella que de algún audition con que Michael J. Fox. Y, Ese tipo. Yeah. Vamos a ver si tú puedes ayudarla y esto y lo otro. So, um, so I did. I, 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 uh, I got the paper. I took her to the casting office. Mm. Um, and uh, I knew the casting director because I had auditioned for him. I got the material. I worked on it with her. I nice. took her in. And, uh, and he came out and he was like, hey, she's got something. And I was like, she's good, right? And <laughs> so he gave me some more uh, material for her to work on. I worked with her. I brought her back in. And that was it. It was like, we want to test her. They want to test her with Michael J. Fox. So I flew to Toronto, Canada with her. I was wow. seven months pregnant, I think. Um, I flew to Toronto, Canada with her, and she tested, and she got the role. And I flew back to Toronto to start shooting with her so that I could be with her and coach her. And, um, wow. and that was it. I brought her to my agent, and they signed her. And... She's been acting ever since. I mean, you rarely get siblings in this business. I look at you. I look at Ulysses Torero, who we interviewed, uh, was it last week or the week before? You rarely get siblings that want to pursue the same thing and make it, you know? Um, yeah. And I, I wish my brother and I were the same way, but we're, we're 10 years apart on the baby. But uh, we're in two different worlds. <laughs> But, well, I'm 16 years older than her. We were two different worlds too, but yeah. I was oh, I was like a mother to her in a lot of ways and I saw her talent. My sister's yeah. very talented. She, she has is. a beautiful singing voice and I was like, how could I not try to help my sister? My aunt helped yeah. me. Somebody always has to like reach out their hand to pull somebody else up and help. You know what I mean, especially in this business? And if you've got what it takes, it's worth the investment. You know, that's what I push for even during the festival. Like that only happens in family. That just happens in life. That happens in our culture. You know what I mean? For me, that's something yeah. that we need to do, that we have to do, not even need, like we yeah. have to do this. Um, yeah. And so that's what we strive for the festival. That's why I strive in my own ethics. Um, and so, gente, that's what we got to do is we got to lift each other up. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. You gotta lift each other up. You have to support each other. We got we have to talk about each other's projects. We gotta watch. We gotta tune in. We gotta spread the word. We gotta share. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, you know, I working on being Mary Jane with Gabrielle Union, which was a one hour show I did on V E T, I have to tell you, the support and the camaraderie in the black community and how they push their projects, their writers, their producers, they hire each other. Yeah. Ain't nobody, you know, it's it, it's important. It's, it's Ava DuVernay, you know, Oprah, all these people, they production companies. It's like, we need that. 
Yeah. We need our Ava DuVernay's, our Oprah's, you know, our people who are creating these things and paying yeah. attention and pushing them and demanding, you know, uh, um, that our people have a voice because yeah. we are the biggest minority. But if we're not demanding it, then they're not going to care. Nobody's going to care right. about it. So that's why, again, the, the support behind the, uh, the, the Baker and the Beauty has been so incredible. And I just feel mm -hmm. honored to be a part of it. I feel honored, you know. And even in, in life in quarantine, I mean, I, I even tell this to people. This is where we make the difference to support Latino business owners of color, Latino businesses. If you're going to buy something, even if it's buying from your bodega to yes. buy at a restaurant or whatever, we've got to support each other now. Like, yeah, I've seen this moment. Yeah. And even the littlest things, that little yes. thing that you think is little to you is big to that small independent, you know, that small business owner. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. You know what? You know what? You know when that happens, though, Calixto? That happens when we value ourselves. Yeah. When we value ourselves, then we realize the respect that we deserve, the attention that we deserve, how we need to honor each other and ourselves mm -hmm. and what we do. That yeah. has to happen, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's what I'd like to be a part of perpetuating in our Latino community. I love my people. I love Latinos. I don't care if you're Colombian, Mexican, Dominican, Nicaraguan. Yeah, no. I don't care. <laughs> 